We know DNA is the future of forensics, and it's the reason why so many cold cases are now being solved. But one lab in the U.S. is so advanced, it is helping solve what was once thought impossible, identifying unknown victims and their previously unknown suspects. Yeah, so how do they do it? True Crime Arizona's Brianna Whitney flew to Texas to learn what goes into DNA identification, the most high-tech lab in the world. Normally, we take you behind the scenes of a true crime case, but this is wheels up to the south for a different kind of behind the scenes. True Crime Arizona is trading in the desert for the Lone Star State, because here in Texas, you'll find the most powerful DNA lab in the world, solving the biggest cold cases in the nation, and we're getting unparalleled access inside for the first time. This isn't like building a company or making an incremental change to something. This is like reinventing an entire field. This is Othram. Is anybody else in the world doing what Othram's doing? Not that I know of. Not to this extent. I think we're going to actually see cold cases converge to extinction. I mean, David told me in 2018, end of 2018, I'm going to build a forensic lab of the future, and I honestly thought he might have lost his mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and now look where we are. Who is going to give you evidence to build a forensic lab of the future, David? Kristen and David Middleman have a medical background and realized they could use their knowledge and expertise for forensic grade genome sequencing. And that's what changed everything when it came to DNA identification. Just outside Houston, in the woodlands, you'll find their lab, now sought after by law enforcement agencies across the world. We've gone from people giving us the most impossible case to work, um, because this, this sounded like crazy science, you know, a few years ago, to people actually giving us their entire backlog of cases. Othram's work is now in headline after headline, but I wanted to go inside the lab to learn how this works. This is the definition of high tech, and the whole process is done under one roof, starting here. This is our forensic lab here at Othram. There's a vestibule where they'll get dressed up, suited up from head to toe, so when they're working with this evidence, there's no contamination. Step one, DNA extraction. Starts here with DNA extraction. As they move down, they cannot come back. They'd have to go home and shower for the day. Step two, the feasibility room. We assess the properties of that DNA from that crime scene, and we decide on whether or not we're certain that we can actually build a DNA profile. If not, they'll put it on a hold shelf and work to advance their own technology before trying it. Step three, and one of the coolest parts. This is our bone room. I think they're starting to work on, on a bone right now. New evidence had just arrived that morning. The lab tech pulled out a femur right in front of us. Now they're going to extract the DNA from that piece of bone. They take pictures of everything. But these are all in case this ever goes to court. So she's documenting the whole process. Step four. Where are we at here? This is our library prep room. And, and now we're going to get the best pictures we can from that DNA that came from that crime scene. DNA is transferred across the lab through a tiny door. We'll pass it through that little silver door. So it literally goes through that door. It literally goes through the door. And people don't move because once they move, like I told you, it's unidirectional. They'll have to go home, shower, and come back. So they're basically stuck in one room at a time until they fully ready, committed to go to the next place. Wow. The last step of the forensic side, the DNA sequencer. That is one of the most powerful sequences on Earth. It's taken the most powerful genomics techniques and applied them to forensics for the very, very first time. The blue is it's running. There's a, there's a cycle going right now, it's sequencing, and the green is it's pending the sequence. That's where the next phase comes into play with Carla Davis, their chief genetic genealogist. I got into genealogy, well, genetic genealogy in 2016 when I was searching for my biological father. She took a DNA test and found a third cousin match. DNA is what brought him to life. Unfortunately, he's deceased, but that is what gave me the answers. After I identified my biological father, I was hooked. Now, Davis is the key to the next part of solving these cold cases after the DNA is sequenced. Once it's uploaded, then it comes to my department, and that's when the genealogists, they begin work on the case. We use DNA to discover 
the ancestors of the person that we're trying to identify. They use three ancestry databases, GEDmatch, Family Tree, and their own, DNA Solves. I work to identify all the siblings. The parent of match number one is actually a half sibling to this set of children. She showed us the visual process of trying to find a familial match. Sometimes a distant match, even a sixth cousin, has cracked a case. That was the one key match to pull the case together. So it can be that crazy. It can be that crazy. And not all cases take the same amount of time to solve. So the shortest time was about two hours. And what's the longest you've dealt with? We have a case going on a year. Davis then gives the match to the law enforcement agency investigating the case as a lead. And it's up to them to confirm the identity Davis and her team have found of either a victim or a suspect. Othram has one shot to get this all right. The DNA that is on here is put on a slide, so it's fixed on a slide, uh -huh. it's just liquid, and then that's consumed. That's why this test is a destructive process. All the work is documented and tracked from beginning to end. Does that make it much more likely to be admissible because you can show that chain of custody? That's exactly right. In 2019, Othram made five identifications total. Now, in 2023, they've made more than 1,200 identifications, sometimes five in a day. There are perpetrators out there that have been arrested or are in trial right now that are not able to harm the next victim. All of the sudden, what they do behind the scenes is launched into the public spotlight, and then the emotional journey begins. That's the purpose. Can you give someone their name back? Can you piece them back? to their story, to what happened to them, and give their family the answers they need to move on. Mm. It's fascinating to hear how they can't go into the different rooms. There's, it's a very high stakes process yes. because it's destructive. And once, if you make a mistake, the DNA is gone. It's yeah. once you try to mm -hmm. extract it, right? Right, that's why they were saying if they don't have the technology advanced enough for a case, they'll put it on that hold shelf and try to advance their own internal technology with their engineers before they take it. Because just like you said, they've got one shot to get this right because yeah, it's liquid by the end of that. Yeah, so that mm -hmm. they're advancing their technologies based on the cases. It's wild. Up. I've never been somewhere yeah. so high tech. When I walked in, I was really amazed at yeah. what I was seeing. And yeah. I know, you know, being there in person is a little different than seeing it there, but I'm so glad we could bring our viewers in yeah. because we talk about all these cold cases and you never know what actually mm -hmm. goes into it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of being in there, I mean, everything's so meticulous. Mm -hmm. What is the vibe in there with those employees? I imagine is quiet like a library. I guess, it, yeah, it was quiet in there, but uh, upstairs, mm -hmm. all of the people are working on those other things, like Carla Davis, the genealogist, was upstairs. Um, they have really good camaraderie there because I've never been in a place where people feel so passionate about what they're doing. Right. They you truly believe. You some of, They sleep there sometimes. Oh, really? Yes, and so what I think is awesome is we got to show viewers what the lab does, but we have part two coming up at nine o'clock, which is these crazy cases they've solved, including some here in Arizona, but cases that had no chance of being solved, victims that had no chance of getting their name back until Othram mm. came back in and did what they did. And, and honestly, they're changing the game truly. Today was the first time they announced legislation is being proposed for the first time to uh, have federal funding for mm -hmm. DNA testing mm -hmm. and forensic genetic genealogy. There has never been legislation wow. for this before. It was just announced by Othram and the federal government today, mm -hmm. and there's a press conference on it tomorrow. So it is rapidly changing. Yeah, and they're giving people closure. It's Who huge. never thought they would get closure, probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, we look forward to your report. Thank Thanks. you, Brianna. Wow.